It's still the bit that I can't understand why I still see barbers in a shop on their phone, mm. sitting in the barber chair. I still don't get it. And you know, you see that come, kind of coming through now on social media because don't do this in your barber shop. You know, yeah. if you want, that's been obvious since the day we had mobile mm. phones. I do think we need to get a bit more grown up about it. I mean, mm. I'm a big advocate that we need licensing. I yep, think we so should be I. seen as a proper, proper industry. Same. We should be licensed. We should be, you know, we should be under scrutiny. And if we're under scrutiny, we'll do a better job. Actually, one of them was my mum who said, whatever you do, don't do it. You don't know what you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got that. And I'm not sure if that's like, you know, a generation of people that were born in the 50s kind of, you know, or, you know, immigrants or anything like that. Yeah. But it was like, you know, no, 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 just just be safe. Just be you know? safe, yeah. Um, so I understood that actually it was all because I didn't want to fail. It's a, it's quite a brave moment that you can turn around and kind of go, I don't know, as an owner, to say, I don't know the answer to this. Yeah. Let's work it out. Yeah. It's a really scary place to go. I mean, I certainly couldn't do that with my old company. I always felt like I had to leave from the front. It's like, I've got the answer. And I was wrong a lot. When I'm helping someone, you know, in their business, mm. I, I don't think I can speak on things that I haven't fallen flat on my face yeah. with. No, um, but I think it's, it's those fuck-ups that yeah. kind of make you... It, it's so painful and it's such a learn that you really do learn from them. 100%. And you want desperately to not... to stop anyone else having to go through that. <laughs> Yeah. themselves. Yeah, no, I get it. Welcome to The Noble Barber. This is a podcast for barbers by barbers, cutting through the crap of the industry. We all want to know how our businesses can run better. I want to talk to people who've done it, messed it up and got it right second time round and can tell us the way that you and I can make our businesses better. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of The Noble Barber. Um, I'm here uh, today with Sam Campagna. Campagna? Campania. Yeah. My Italian. Yeah, no, it's I, I appalling. Love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Thanks for coming up. Really nice of you to make it. Um, and we were just talking, really, you know, you've had a, a journey we were just quickly chatting about. And um, your new store is thriving. And I'm seeing lovely, nice things about it. But I'm just intrigued as to what got you to your last company and, and onwards. So if we could have a quick yeah. recap, if yeah, you like, cool. of, um, of, of how you got into the industry and beyond. Well, it, it seems a long time ago. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Firstly, thank you for having me on. Um, I appreciate uh, being able to sit on the sofa with you. And, Thanks, uh, man. This, this, uh, hopefully it'll be a, a really good episode for everyone. Um, yeah, going back to my journey 25 years ago now, um, I started as an apprentice Antonian guy. Um in the era that, you know, barbering was, you know, kind of taking a turn, yeah. I would say downwards. Um, and I still just think of my uncle there with his cigarette in his mouth and the ash rolling down the gown. And that was that You're kind of family of barbers, are yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it kind of d defined that era. And actually, I didn't want to do it. Mm. Um, my mum wanted me, I left sixth form, and my mum wanted me to get a job. She went, go, go, yeah. go and do that. And of course, being of like, you know, immigrant background, my parents, um, you know, and seeing my uncle, her brother, you know, create a business uh, in the UK and and uh, and it and it do well. It was always that kind of kick through the door to kind of go and do that. It's safe. Mm. Um, actually, I thought it's about as stereotypical as me going to make pizzas, but you know, at the time, you know, I didn't want to do it. Um, so anyway, I, I managed. She kicked me through the door, um, and I started at Tony and Guy. Uh, and um, I started learning. Uh, within about a year, I kind of got a bit frustrated. Right. But that's kind of how I was. I like, like, you know, I like the creative side. And that was a hairdressing apprenticeship, learning that was a hairdressing and, apprenticeship. and all yeah. the aspects yeah. that go with it. Um, and obviously, early doors of Tony and Guide, I'm not sure, really sure how it operates today, but we, we uh, you learn both up to a certain point, uh, and then you could pick. Okay. which one you wanted to go with. So I was definitely on the colour side. Oh, okay. um, you know, apart from going in the dispensary and using the dead kind of uh, bleach to put through my hair when, in between yeah. clients. And that's what you done at 16, you know. That was bad. Uh, so it was fun. Um, but yeah, it was kind of out of frustration. Um, maybe it was a little bit, bit too systematic and controlled, mm. you know, for me at the time. Um so I moved on, went, uh, worked for a kind of unisex salon that had a barbers and stuff like that. Um, and really there I kind of learned the the core philosophy of like old school Italian barbering, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, um, 
really being precise, clean, mm. tidy, hanging your cables up and all this kind of stuff. Um, generally, throughout my career, I then kind of moved on to different barbershops over time. Uh, to much of the demise of my parents, which was like, oh no, no, you should stay there and... Yeah, and yeah. hopefully that person will die one day and you'll <laughs> you'll you'll you'll, you'll, you'll take over the shop. Um which I always found really bizarre. I was just like, why why is that the um the ethos yeah. that you take in this industry? Um and of course, you know, what was relevant about that for me was that there was no real ladder. You know, you had two options. One, you went and done it yourself. Um two you did wait for someone to move on, whether they were selling up or, or dying, <laughs> um, as extreme as that sounds. Um, yeah, no, but it was true, yeah, right? No, it was absolutely. true. Um, and, uh, and, that, and that was your kind of, your hopes and dreams with kind of to do that. Um, so eventually, I kind of left hairdressing a couple of times. One time I, for my sins, went to work as an estate agent because I felt that, because I liked looking through Right Move, it would be a really cool oh. idea, <laughs> a really good thing to do. Anyway, I hated the, all of that. So of course you get get back into the thing you know how to do, and um, and you know within this time I was always really successful in every salon I worked in, which you know I didn't know at the time um, until I moved to London, um, and I ended up working for Jacks of London. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, a few people even on the wall team that I worked with, you know, were from that there originally, right, so yeah. we knew each other, um, and that was like probably. Um, the steepest, but probably the most relevant learning curve in my career because I got pitched against, you know, another 14 barbers mm. in London. And this was on Wimbledon Bridge, you know, like back then, you know, really busy shop, you know. Um, and uh, I turned up and kind of everyone was kind of looking what I was doing and watching my haircuts. And I started getting a bit paranoid, mm. you know. I was like, whoa, like, what's going on? Why are they, why are they looking yeah. at me? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, the guy who had later I became really good friends with said, um, I said, is there something like I'm, I'm missing? Like, is there something I'm doing wrong? Because you keep looking and he went, no, nah, mate, I just, it's just so good. I don't know how you're doing it, basically. Mm. Um, anyway, again, that was a little bit of affirmation of like, you know, uh, it gave me a bit of confidence yeah, and affirmation to know where you, you kind of stood and, you know, then I ended up doing stuff like um, helping them when they opened up their franchises to like front it and kind of set it up at the beginning, yeah. you know, get that team going. But again, I didn't really know that I had any strength in that particular mm. field at the time. My my mentality and my upbringing was just do, yeah, you know. Just but do you were it. presumably really enjoying seeing this kind of growth. Yeah, and evidently over time, I think, I've come to believe that that's actually the bit that I really yeah, enjoyed, yeah, you know, yeah. um, I've, I, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, from there, I then moved back to St. Albans in 2007, um, worked at the salon that has become Barbone. Okay, um, yeah. So I worked there in 07, uh, recently purchased it in the last couple of years, um, Barbone. And, um, but the, I then left, and again, I, I thought my only option was to take that leap. Uh, and I still remember to this day, kind of met my wife, who's now my wife, and uh, we bought this little cottage, two up, two down. You know, we had a cat. I never tried swinging it in there, but, <laughs> but you know, it would, it would have been, been, it's had a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I remember just kind of like looking at this property down George Street in St. Albans, and it was this tiny little unit. And we were just coming out of the, that kind of 08 mm. recession. Um, so I opened in 2010, the first shop. And we were just kind of, kind of coming out of that. And everyone went, don't do it, you're mad. Like, you know, it's the so worst it's thing we'll do. It's been a rough old time, yeah, definitely. It's been a rough time. Barbering still hadn't really, you know, climbed in, yeah. in the outskirts, I would say. Um, anyway, I think I let two months pass and I woke up, got myself out of bed staring out the my back window but I'm just going to call if it's still there I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to give it my all but again I, I'm not the type of person to really say that mm. I would just I decided and that was I'm it doing it yeah, yeah. And, um, so yeah and, and I kind of like and that was the start of that was the beginning of the alternative barber. yes yeah yeah originally um, so we I started it and again all I ever wanted to do and my core philosophy in it without like fully writing it down 
but I knew what I believed in. I knew that, mm. you know, if I believed in something enough, I would drive that forward. And it was like all those frustrations over that, over that career, you know, hopping from barbershop to barbershop, yeah. you know, leaving a couple of times. And again, I've seen that replicated with people I know and people then I talk to and help and mentor like within the industry. Um, I thought I, I need to build a structure that is almost completely biased to the staff. Mm. You know, how do I give them this like really like solid platform? And, and really it, it came down to how much am I willing to support them? Mm. And it was, I would never let them fail, you yeah. know. Um, and basically, we just took people on all the time as a company. And it was, you know, um, that made them fail. I mean, within that journey, and that, that lasted for 13 years, um, I've done so many wrong things, <laughs> you know. And, and it's kind of why I feel like when I'm helping someone, uh, you know, in their business, why it's so relevant. Mm. I, I don't think I can speak on things that I haven't fallen flat on my face yeah. with. No, um, but I think it's, it's those fuck-ups that yeah. kind of make you... It, it's so painful and it's such a learn that you really do learn from them. 100%. And you want desperately to not... To stop anyone else having to go through that <laughs> yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah no, I, I get there's it. There's some totally. people that, you know, will believe and, and feel that, you know, um, oh, you know, don't... There's some elements that you shouldn't, like... Mm cross the mark with it and I suppose some of that stuff um maybe that I used to give people too much pressure was one of them you know I spent the you know maybe a good chunk of my career and when I started that business kind of almost wanting to believe that the people around you could have the same mentality as you yeah you know um and but you project that sometimes mm. in, and it and can come really across there. negative yeah, and, yeah. and you know um but there was an, an immense culture within that business for such a long time, you know, and uh, it was almost like we became kind of local rock stars. You know? Oh, cool. You, yeah. You, would, you, would, you know, we would have 15 people, you know, 15 person queues, you know, yeah. every day. You know, we would turn up, you know, an hour early to have a coffee, you know, waiting outside, yeah. sitting on a stool, and you're like, what, what have I done? Um the good side of that was that we were the first to go to appointments, you know, yeah, many, many no, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, like things that I always thought, how do I always make this better? Mm. Um, and again, because I was willing to take all the hit for that, I would always push for the idea. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of organically really grew. Um, I'd go into a shop and be like, right, I've got to do it. And I'd put pressure on everyone. Right, we've got to do it. You know, um, and going back to the building of something, I I enjoyed designing, building mm. the teams as well as the shops. But it was predominantly people. But when you in. kind of move, so I mean, I, I totally get the kind of yeah, launching a new mm. thing is so exciting, and and it and it kind of plays to all your strengths, obviously. But did you find leaving them and moving on to the next one hard? Were you did you work in each shop, or did you did you put a team in and then leave them to it? Yeah. Did you leave the old shop? How did you transition from one to two? Uh, again, this is probably an expectation that you used to put on myself. But, right. you know, we used to build a team in the current shops and then I would go with them to start that new shop. Oh, okay. Uh, so it was never, okay, location, open, staff. It yeah. was always, you know, I can give those people the trust and, 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 and uh, the ability to look after this and deal mm. with that. Um, there were certain system, you know, systems in place that didn't fully allow that at the time. Um, and that was just kind of a, you know, uh, a company structure issue that, you know, I wanted them to have every bit of control with it. Yeah. But certain elements didn't allow it. But yeah, initially I would do that. Um, and then it's like, they don't need me. Yeah, nice. You know? So um, when I say nice, did you enjoy that when they when you weren't needed? Was that a good thing, or was that your was that the, the kind of klaxon for you to go and open another shop up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Everything's smooth and peachy. Let's go. Let's let's, let's let's fuck it up again and start all over. No, I don't think anything was ever smooth and peachy, to be honest. <laughs> um, but it was it was certainly like um, I think I would I would I would say I would sit on the fence with something like that. Like I feel that. You know, in all these businesses, we can 
take the approach of let's just leave them to it. Mm. Um, but I feel that needs to come with a package of I'm here. Yeah, there needs to be that support system. Yeah, and so as long I kind of always used to, you know, I kind of tried to write a mentorship program, you know, 10 years ago, mm. you know. Um, but I never really could put it down on paper because there was too many variables. I kept on thinking of too many variables right. to say, you know, we're all individual. And so that was instantly a variable that mm. was really difficult. So it was kind of like, hey, look, you know, I need to be there for them to lean on, but I need to let them run it. Mm. Um, that never fully happened, you know, um, with the old company. Um, but it got, it got pretty close. Mm. Um, but again, I always think, you know, as, as owners, we're meant, we kind of think... We think or feel like we're meant to know. Mm. Um, and it's only, you know, I, 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 I walked away from my old business and started again. And I think at that point, it almost gives you a, 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 a moment of clarity to look back at it and go, actually, that was my fault. I can learn from this. I can do it differently. Has that happened with Marbone? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, because it, it's know. a moment that you can be kind of kind to yourself as an owner. I've done all of that. I've experienced it. I've learned it. Um, but, you know, setting up your first business is not a kind place. You know, I mean, that was one of the reasons I wanted to do this. Mm. So that as bar, as store owners, we can talk to each other and kind of go, we all go through this crap. But it's quite a harsh environment as you set up your first and certainly a first chain. I mean, these are all yeah. big learns. Yeah. I and it was you, wasn't it? So a lot of it rested on your... Shoulders. I, I always go back to a moment that I think is really important to me. And I think, you know, people can come into your business and you can give some of your business away to grow it and investors or whatnot mm. and whatever you do with that, that's, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you choose to do. But I still remember, I didn't have much money. So like we've done all the work in the shop myself. I got lucky with two antique Coke and chairs, 1900s. Me and my dad restored them. Mate, you know, gorgeous. And they, they sat there in, you know, one of the oldest streets and most prestigious streets in St. Albans. And, you know, they were gleaming there oh, in the mate. window. And at the time, it was probably just me and Joth in Savills that had the same kind of old school look, you know. And we realised we opened around the same time. Oh, did you really? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah after we worked together yeah, for a yeah. bit. Um, but I would say the thing I remember the most was putting that key in the door the first day. And it's like, this is it. yeah. <laughs> And I would be there early. I wouldn't leave till the, the, the time had gone past because yeah. everyone was like so ridiculously important to me. Mm. And I think when you put yourself in that moment, I'm not talking about someone who just gets flung a bit of money or whatever. There's a different narrative. There's no, a different it's meaning. Nice. It feels like your only throw of the dice. Yeah, it? yeah. If, if something's set up, you know, and someone goes, oh, I'll give you some money for it. I think, yeah, great. But I don't see any creativity mm. in that. You know, it's like... And I kind of feel like that with a bit with franchises a little bit sometimes. Right. You know, it's like it's a great idea, um, but why can't why can't you do it yourself? But mm. then what's easy maybe to me is really difficult for other people. So I get yeah. that you know. Oh, well, you know, and you and you having lived it, you've you've earned your scars. You're proud of your yeah. You're, you're, you're proud of your scars, <clears throat> and and don't want to give that up. You know what I mean? You've learned that. You've experienced it. You you understand it. Mm. Um, but in the same way with some of your staff that you wanted to kind of be there and you know, a lot of that is about taking the pain out of it for them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's... You, know, you that's, don't have to make it, it doesn't have to be that hard. Come with me, this is the way we can do it, it'll be amazing. Yeah, um, I think that I would love to say I'm, I've got the same, I've always been like this and I've had the same, you know, mindset and stuff, <laughs> uh, you know, throughout my career, but it was like... 2017 something like that right and i finally kind of I, I didn't really know how to deal with emotions uh mm. and that was anything from you know a member of staff letting you down you know to mm. to not really knowing how to process my own stuff which yep. i felt I, I feel holds you back mm. um and you know i had that psychological support and after that i had the understanding of what, what everything really meant to me. Yeah. And yeah. I challenged that. Out of that came um, the information and the data and, you know, to say, actually, I don't want this anymore. Mm. Not the way it is now. You know, like everything leading up to that point was anything from, you know, um, 
what we don't talk about sometimes is we've got a lot of like charities that you know, deal with mental health and us barbers, you know, we go, hey, look, we, we support that. Yep. But actually, we're some of the ones who suffer the most. Right, yeah, yeah, no, right there, you know, right there. Absolutely. And, and you can, building a business and not having the right support, even someone to talk to, mm. and putting all those elements on you, even saying, hey, come to me for support, puts that crown on your head, puts yeah. you on the pedestal. Then every, every little thing, everyone's coming to you, mm. you know. Um, but from that point, I then learned that everything just kind of came down to, I could then make something a process. Yeah. I, could, I could bring it down. I could narrow it. What well, you know, anything from is it important? Is it not? You know. Um, so when like starting it again, yes, it's relevant what I done. But I almost go that that was that time period, mm-hmm. and the the person that you know you're not that I, you're just I'm, not I'm that, that, you're not I, that fella anymore. No, I'm not. No, and it's like I, I haven't got get I haven't got the same. You know, the same reasoning to push mm. isn't the same reason I had then. Mm. I mean, it's not a cry, cry, hoo, hoo. I didn't get to see my kids, but I didn't. No. Because I had a supporting partner who would do that. But that kind of like veers you on a really weird track. Mm. You know, it's like I would be there all the time, mm. you know. Um, and again, I don't mind that. But I it doesn't, doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> no, but I think you have. And, you know, I think certainly that kind of, you know, your upbringing and, and mindset mm. is... It's like I've worked really hard for this. I've got to make this right. I've got and this kind of fear of failure. Hundred percent. You know, and I think you know. Certainly, I set my first store up when I was like 21, 22. Mm. Um, and I was just like, this is not going to fail. And you know, you don't. You're not kind to yourself. You know, and no. I think you know. We, we hear this. You know, be kind. But you know, I kind of hear it very much about you know. You've got to be compassionate. And I think this starts with yourself because as yeah. an owner, you get caught up in this. I can't fail. And you kind of forget you're there to succeed. Yeah, that, yeah. That yeah. you can't fail. And yeah. I think it's a really, especially when the tax man gets on you and mm. the banks are getting on you and and everything else is happening around you, there's pressures that you weren't expecting. 100%. Yeah. Um, and no, I think it does it does affect you. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that was that initial bit that I said where, you know, actually one of them was my mum who said, whatever you do, don't do it. You don't know what you're doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got and, that. And I'm not sure if that's like, you know, a generation of people that were born in the 50s, kind of, you know, or, you know, immigrants or anything like that. Yeah. But it was like, you know, no, 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 just just be safe. Just be you know? safe, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I, yeah, it wasn't until like that time where I got mm. to understand my driving force. I mm. understood that actually it was all because I didn't want to fail, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you you know, I think I think it takes... It takes it's a it's quite a brave moment that you can turn around and kind of go, I don't know as an owner to say I don't know the answer to this. Yeah. Let's work it out. Yeah. It's a really scary place to go. I mean, I certainly couldn't do that with my old company. I always felt like I had to lead from the front. It's like I've got the answer, and I was wrong a lot. Yeah, but, I think you know, I think being being wrong and being accountable is that the first step mm. that you know we should all be taking. You know, it's like I'm happy to say. Hey, look, yeah, okay, that thing failed, but what was my part in it? Yeah. You know, and it's never a one person done this or mm. one person done that. Because even if it's something like, a, you know, a breakdown in communication, well, there's two people who can communicate, yeah. you know, so yeah. you know, think, things like well, that. Well, I think that's know. it. I think there's always that line that there's three truths in everything, mm. your side, my side, and <laughs> yeah. what really happened. And yeah, I exactly. think the more, I think the, the more you, which it sounds like you are now, you get a moment where you can see, the what really happened. Yeah. And that's really exciting when you can can look at the truth. No, a bit was yours. No, a bit wasn't. At, yeah. And I think when you can recognise stuff's not always in your control, mm. you've got a bit of a chance at sanity and to enjoy it and, and yeah. take some of that pressure off your shoulders. I mean, I used to do that thing a lot that I would um, feel the need to respond all the time. Mm. Uh, and, of course, that can open up loads of cans of worms, can't it? And, you know, things like that. And actually, through the process of kind of discovering what I wanted, I just asked questions. And even if I didn't like the answer, I would just kind of go, okay, I used that as the understanding of the next thing. Yeah. You know, but before I'd be like, oh, hold on, you know, um, let me try and find a solution to this. Or actually, I've been thinking about this loads. Mm. And actually, sometimes you don't need to give that, yeah. that the answer to those things, or, yeah. you know. I think questions um, are really exciting. 
Yeah, yeah, completely. It, 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 it took me a while to learn that. Yeah, yeah. And it opened up a whole new realm. Mm. So, um, you know, in this, in this new venture. Um, yeah, so when did Barbone... Because I love that, because it was the shop that you uh, <laughs> yeah. that you worked in prior yeah. to Alternative, wasn't it? That's Which right. you were just that's saying. Right. I think that's yeah. fantastic kind of kismet or fate that you're back in the yeah. same room. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes a bit bit too dry, as in I don't really kind of like hold on to those emotions of like, should it have been, shouldn't it have been. Mm. Sometimes I'm a bit like, well, could it have been is. anyone, yeah. Mm. Um, which sometimes people <laughs> think I'm not excited about something, but, you know, I am. Um, but yeah, we, my old boss called me um, with no knowledge to the fact that I was already within this process of selling my original company. Um, so she called me, she said, look, I'm moving to Australia. Do you know anyone who wants to buy the business? And I genuinely didn't have any plans. I thought I might come and work in London for a bit. Mm. I might do some session work, you know, but all I knew is at that time, I didn't want to be part of that company moving forward anymore. So um, we met up and we kind of like discussed it all and we came to an, an agreement as you would maybe, you know, buying a company. Um, but it was the first time I inherited a team as well. Oh, wow. Which, which oh, yeah, was, which of course. Was, which so it was, was an really, existing running business, of course. Yeah, which yeah. was really interesting. But, um, you know, I kind of sat there and I tore the business apart and we didn't have any particular job roles in my old company. There was no distinct roles of what you'd done. There was kind of like a, oh, we kind of all do this. So um, I wouldn't say that I really dealt with the paperwork side of the old company. I dealt with the shop floor side and the design, you know. So yeah. it didn't mean I didn't know how to do it. You know, when I get, I love that stuff when I get my head into it. But for me, what was going to grow the business was growing the people inside people the inside, business. Yeah. So, so it was really nice looking through that business. It's how it, how it worked, its profit, where the leaks were, how I could improve it. So, I bought it in uh, August twenty two. Um, you know, while I still owned the other company, and you know, they were they were informed. Um, and but with the caveat that I wasn't going to go and work in there, so I kind of ran it behind the scenes. So this was just now like running a business from home, if you like, yeah. where it was just like starting. At this to point, set... you'd never cut hair in this shop. You no, just, no. You just you were the owner. No, I didn't it. cut hair till I was contractually free. Yeah, so you know I wasn't on the booking system. Or that must have been like... quite a good learn, though, wasn't it? Having a bit of arm's length on the whole yeah, thing. That must yeah. have been very I mean, weird. Towards the end of the selling of the company and you know there was family situations going on i'd kind of pulled away anyway right um from cutting hair um but i love that bit i love cutting hair mm. and it's like you know sometimes you think come on if i could just do that bit you know that's the bit that brought me to where i am yeah, today yeah, yeah. Like, almost that's the easy bit isn't it you know like yeah. um but yeah i took it over restructured it and i ran it as the old company um you know, with the old logos, and it was chaps at the time. Um, really overused, common name. Right. <laughs> but, like, you know, one of those ones that even when I worked there, they used to say, hello, chaps. I used to go, oh, Have you still got that email, though? I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. I have. I've got, I was I'm <laughs> sure I emailed you yeah, for that. I, I've got a new website going, so oh, I was well like, I'm waiting for the new domain to come in. So I just still <laughs> use that, you know. Um, but again, we did, they, it didn't have these little bits, like, you know, there was no one... Doing Instagram. I mean, I'm no, I'm no social media guru, right. but I just think I'm active. I'd rather be active consistently yeah, yeah, yeah. than like you know. Um, but yeah, it was kind of restructuring. Found the thing. Found all the little kind of um, slight little changes. I mean, they were doing you know kids' haircuts. They were taking 45 minutes. You know, so it wasn't particularly a, mm. like you didn't have to be a genius to like work out yeah where the holes um, were where the holes were. Yeah. But again, people don't do a breakdown of yeah, just you know, stopping for a minute and having a good look pound per hugely, minute. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, and as cost of personnel have gone up, you know, mm. it, you know, it needs to you know you weren't charging forty five pound for a kid's haircut. No, they weren't. <laughs> so they were, I think they were charging like thirteen pounds. <laughs> you know, so like when you break it down, yeah. you know. Um, but anyway, you know. Managing it from behind, you know, I let them put their hands up who wanted to be a manager. They'd never give, been even given those opportunities yeah. before, you know. Um, and we kind of took it from there, really. And this kind of, we're a year, a year and a, you know, two years nearly down the line. Excuse me. 
Uh, and, you know, I've been told that we've increased profit by 40%. Wow. You know, and it wow. was a great little business before, yeah. you know, so it wasn't like it was on its knees. You know, it had three and a half mm. members of staff, you know. Um, and what I love about that is I'm not, I've not gone to business school. Mm. I've not studied economics. Yeah. I've not done anything like that. All I've done is go, um, I'm going to solve this problem. Mm. And I think like, you know, being, I, I, I always say that we have grown up in this industry. And if you've, you know, been doing it the same period of time as me, the only thing that's really my biggest takeaway in barbering, maybe a bit more than hairdressing, is that it's, we're, we're really juvenile when we get into this industry mm. with our approach, yeah. with our business savviness, with all that kind of stuff. Mm. And the danger is that we stay in that mindset mm. for a long, long time. Um, yeah. So the bit that was lovely is that I've done it through the ability to problem solve. Mm. Um, well, I think I'm, not just, saying, I'm not saying all those other things aren't valid. <laughs> I'm saying no, that, but I know, think a lot of us get into it because we really love cutting hair, really enjoy cutting hair. And... Uh, I mean, certainly I was, just didn't ever feel comfortable having a boss, didn't feel comfortable being directed. And as soon as I started cutting hair in my own shop, I just felt freer. Um, I've done exactly that. I stood behind a chair cutting hair. I've gone off and, and spent 20 odd years learning the industry and mm. the business. And probably now I'm much more behind the chair than I've ever been before. And I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. Um, but you're right, you need no one, very few of us go into that with, this is our business model, this is how yeah. we're going to do it. Yeah. It does fall into plan. And yeah, the more I talk to people, I think there's some younger barbers out there that are switched on, you know, and hopefully they're, they're learning from the mistakes of, of, of others. And um, no, it's really nice to feel that we, we're starting to become a more kind of grown well, up industry. This is why I said, if you were... Yeah. Uh, in kind of my era mm. because I, you know, now it's, it's, uh, you know, people are way more advanced yeah, with that yeah. stuff, you know, than, than ever before. Mm. And I love seeing that. But you you're know. not, you're not just behind the chair. You do quite a lot of other bits and pieces. I see you're up at Barber Connect. You yeah. pop up, you're yeah. doing some, you're becoming a bit of a media darling on the quiet. Um, you seem to appear a bit more. <laughs> Is that because you're not just trapping yourself behind the chair the whole time? Are you... I think it was born out of, well, I mean, my introduction mainly, I mean, I've done bits and pieces, you know, in the past. Um, but actually, I, if I'm being completely and utterly open, it was a part of the industry that I didn't like. Oh, I, did, okay. I didn't like going to shows. Right. Uh, you know, um, you know, oddly, I'd go and watch like, you know, someone like, you know, the Vidal Soon bit or Patrick Cameron or mm. that's the, you know, I'm really visual, but people would lose me when they'd start kind of like getting, you know, I know yeah. this has come up before on your things, but have on you, your podcast. But have like. you changed your mind or has it changed a bit? Because, you know, because now you're up on stage doing doing that. Yeah, I, 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 I suppose... What changed? The bit... Nothing really, apart from... I just I just wanted to translate the way I yeah. can... I can t and, like, this is why, you know, there was a post the other day on social media and it was, like, a barber coach and, uh, you know having a kind of rant and uh which is fine you know the, the industry is really like with its back against the wall at the moment with things like this right and i speak to you know um, loads of people that own companies clip mm. companies scissor companies you know and uh you know they're frustrated you know um but i just kind of responded you know it was all about sections and he didn't you know it was too why are we making this really complicated it's like yeah yeah you know what? It, it, it's a valid point right but there are there is this new generation that are coming in that are also associating that particular way of presenting themselves on social media or on the stage as mm. pure success. Because, you know, I'm from St. Albans, home of Menspire, if you like, right? Look yeah. at a great job they've done. Yeah. You know, whether that you deem that that's over sectioning or not, um, it's kind of irrelevant. People learn in different ways. You know, when someone can draw and they come to me and I teach them, oh man, it's heaven. Yeah. Because I can I can yeah. instantly translate what I'm trying to say to them, you know, and I'm not, I'm not always been the best speaker. So I just, I don't really like the ball crap mm. on, on, you know, I might not do it publicly a lot. I've started doing it a little bit more because I need to provoke a little bit, yep. you know, nowadays you either need to provoke or, <laughs> you know, um, so I feel like I have to kind of get 
my true opinion across. Yeah. And um, I was always like that on stage. Mm. Um, 20, I think it was 2017, 2016, you know, uh, I got signed by Wall and I was really, um, it was a real honour and a privilege um, to some extent to, you know, become really good mates with Simon Shaw, become his right-hand man for, yeah, yeah. you know, that great period of time. There was loads of things about that that we really liked. But I suppose my goal was that I worked for that company mm. and I then completely embody myself in that role. Yeah. So I didn't care whether I speak in front of a camera and, you know, give you a barbering tip. I don't care. But if I make that, like my old business, yeah, yeah. if it made it, it successful, them, yeah. then that was my, that, that became like, in the process, yeah. It just became like my pure uh, mm. direction. So I saw it as an extension to the business. You know, by proxy, me being up there uh, and me being public like that it's into the industry public yeah. gave our, our business clout. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and that's just how I, how I always have always seen it. You know, now it's like, do I want to work with these people? Are they nice? Is it a great company? Yeah. yeah? Great. You yeah. know, but you're getting a bit of personal kind of feedback from that, a bit of personal gratitude that you've I always, I've always yeah. had that. I've always had, uh, you know, if someone says tag a barber online, I'll probably never get tagged. But if I showed you my inbox and people that I've managed to work alongside yeah. and with, and you get that, actually, I thrive more on, on that mm. when someone goes out of their way to say, hey, man, you know, when I worked with you 10 years, uh, 10 years ago, I never realized the impact. To like now yeah, where I'm so, doing my own thing. Yeah. And that's that little bit of like personal success mm. that, that I like, you know, mm. um, you know, do I really care if someone thinks I'm a great hairdresser? Not really. Mm. You know, it's like, that is, I find that part of the job the easiest because right. it's just visual. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know, but I mean, taking it wider and, and looking at it that, you know, you've done, you know, You've earned your stripes, 25 years in the industry. You've set up, owned a chain, sold a chain. Yeah. You started up another store, really nice brand. I mean, very nice branding, mate. Yeah. Love it. Um, you. And, you know, on stage, working with, well, you know, you've kind of earned your stripes and so on. So you've wandered through the industry. Yeah. Um, and I found from here, like you say, on stage, the education runs through it. Mm. Um a lot of the conversations I have is, you know, oh, it's not young people coming into the industry or they don't want to do it properly or, oh, they've done a 10-week course and they think they're superstars or they've learned at home on TikTok. And it, it, it's quite negative about kind of people coming into the industry. But we don't seem to have a strong apprenticeship scheme mm -hmm. anymore. You know, me and you both came through sweeping floor for, a, you know, for, mm -hmm. for, for stores and cutting hair and, and, you know, cutting your mate's hair and, letting them forgive you and then cutting it again. Um, and, you know, we went through it that way. Um, it feels like there's a real change in the industry and I'm not sure anyone's got their head around what's, what's the better way. Mm. Um, a lot of people coming into it later in life, people in their 30s who've had a career they've not enjoyed a, a picking up some scissors and they're doing courses and, and coming through. And there seems to be quite a lot of anger in the community of, you know, they bloody think they can do this and... And I'm not sure how you would get into the industry any other way at the moment. And what's your take on... I think this is exactly why, you know, I've started kind of saying a few bits online. So all I picked up on there was what weighs better. Mm. And like, so then that becomes the bit of the problem that I, yeah, yeah. I feel like needs solving, yeah. right? So uh, just to give you a bit of insight on like maybe how I would like think about something like that. It's like, well... You could do the mundane stuff like better for who, better, you know, better in what way or whatever. So it's like, okay, like, what does this person want to go and do? Right. And if that is be really successful in terms of having a thriving business where their goal is to make money, do you know what? You might want to go and learn on the job with really good people. It might take you longer, you know, it might be harder are people that actually care about that, your outcome of mm -hmm. how successful you're going to be in that avenue. I've always felt that courses, and almost regardless of who they're with, if I'm being completely honest, I've never received anyone from a course 
and not have to give them another year of the same thing that I just mm -hmm. said. <laughs> like yeah. to bring them through in the salon, got to care about their growth. But the quick avenue, I suppose, to some degree, um, creates a problem um, for the other avenue because it kind of directs you at, oh, I can just go and do this thing. I'll come out. I'll have this skill set. So I should be able to do it. Mm. And the should bit is where I think those kind of courses mm. end up giving people anger because the premise is you're going to go and do this thing and yeah. come out. And but the other <laughs> side, I'm not sure. The, I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I hear that. But I think the other side, I'm not sure the other side's there because equally, no. you know, if you've got a kid that's gone through or a young person that's gone through, um, you know, their MVQ mm. at the local college one day a week and then they're working in a store the rest of the time, they're not learning. I mean, you know, these guys that are coming out of a college after 18 months, they're not shop floor ready. They're not. Um, you know, the guys that are doing it is, you know, yes, if you're in a store and you're actually mm. teaching someone day in, day out, and as a as a company, your focus is on those young people, then they're going to get there mm. um, and they're going to be amazing. Yeah. There's just not enough people doing that. No. And, and, and there's not the support in the college. There's, That's right. Yeah, you know, the, the courses people are having to pay for, their, their businesses, mm. you yeah. Know, yeah, they can get a lot into nine weeks, 12 weeks, you know. They can. But there's there always seems to be this void at the end of both of them. You come out of a college, you spent the best part of two years, I'm going to do this, and you come out, arrive at a shop, and they're like, yeah, you're not ready, I'll, I can't take you on from college. And so we, we're not, there's obviously people mm. wanting to come in, but mm. I'm not quite sure if we're kicking the door open or wedging it a bit shut. Well, again, this is going, you know, on, on that, uh, you know, original part of the business was to really take that risk and hedge that bet against mm. these people. And that's how we grew to like a 30, 25 staff yeah. business. Um, but I think because the the newer generation um, are used to instant, they're used yeah. to now straight away, you know. So you almost focus, some people focus on social media first mm. and then going up, you know, like companies yeah. in London now, they'll spend 60, 70% of their budget on marketing. Mm. So then naturally, like, the younger kids are going to do that. The other side of it is that no one really has got a proper business set up to really, I feel anyway, to take that risk. So they're not going to take you on unless you are ready mm. So they're not taking the risk. So like, you're right, you end up at a dead end. It's just, I don't um, know where they go. I don't, you know. Yeah. I suppose it kind of... And so what happens is you end up with a lot of people going, well, I can't, you know, I'm not going to do it. Or yeah, you end cutting up with a lot of home. disappointed people. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I've had three people maybe in the last year who have done a quick course um, and then just kind of done it from home. And yeah, you get the odd exceptional person who's like a genius in terms of like, you know, just can grind and work and come yeah, yeah. from home and start getting better and better but actually most of them just don't mm. and it's you know um they just kind of end up tailing away and it's like my worst nightmare is actually working alone mm. you know like not well i think certainly i mean the barbershop life is is kind of is is meant to be is kind of the big part of it being in a team yeah. the band uh the kind of buzz yeah but well, we that's had the whole that's the whole point i think isn't it we had someone move away, you know, work from home for two years, come back. And it was really fascinating because he was a great hairdresser. And what was really fascinating is that two years out of the salon and he came back, things were different for him and for us. But mm. we'd moved on two years as a collective. Yeah. And he'd stayed where he left us two years ago. So he was like, oh, what, we don't do that anymore. Like, nah, mm. because like, so he like stayed behind even socially on the shop floor. Yeah. You know, it was, it was I mean, quite I strange. think it is. It's all about progression, I think. Yeah. And when you're working with people, they force you to be better. You know, you're forced to kind of you see someone doing something. And it means mm. you're seeing other people playing, experiencing. Yeah, um, yeah no, I think it's, it's the thing that absolutely, you know, foxes me constantly. You know, we we always have apprentices. We work, we, you know, we've done everything to try and keep it as interactive mm. and interesting. But it's the conversation I have the most with people that, they're, oh, they're not as good as they used to be. They don't want to work. They don't, you know, we've got great kids that are really doing it, you know, 100%. You know and they're out there. And you, but, it, but the big bit is that as, as, you know, as owners, we've got to work with them, you know, and yeah. we've got to, this is the interesting thing is we have to work for them. Yeah. You know, we've got to be making it interesting. We've got to make it, 
because I didn't enjoy my apprenticeship. You know, I learn, <laughs> I learn, <laughs> and I, you know, I was lucky. I worked for a for a for a, a, a name that was known mm. for its training, and I followed their process. A lot of my life involved folding towels, washing floors. You know, not the stuff that I wanted to do. Yeah, um, and now you've just got to make it more interactive. I just worry that there's not enough people actually t- teaching mm. um, an awful lot of people kind of complaining that nobody's teaching. Do you, do you think that, to throw a question your way, do you think that um, the, 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 the industry sees education as just, if you're better at cutting hair, then that's fine. That's where you need to be. Because I, I, I'm more on the side of, I make you successful on the shop floor. I don't like training people from zero for example, but I used to get anyone who was keen on that role in the shop say, I'll tell you what, you take them on, you get them to a certain point. Mm. And then that's where I would step in and go, now is the time where I make you good on the shop floor. Yeah. And it wasn't actually mostly to do with cutting hair, communication, mm. how they treat their client. We know all this, yeah, but yeah. it's still the bit that I can't understand why I still see barbers in a shop on their phone, mm. sitting in the barber chair. I still don't get mm. it. And, you know, you see that come, kind of coming through now on social media because don't do this in your barbershop, you know, yeah. if you want. That's been obvious since the day we had mobile mm. phones. You know, mm. if you're having to listen to that and go, oh, blimey. But, I, mean, <laughs> I, do think, I mean, I think, you know, this is, you know, I mean, I think, you know, two, you know, answering it in a few ways. One, I think just societally, we're all on our, everyone's on their phone. Yeah. You know, and if you've not got clients in and you had not finished watching your Netflix series, it's really easy to start doing that. I wouldn't do it um, in the shop. No, yeah. but, but I just yeah. think it just bleeds in. Yeah. Um, I do think I do think we need to get a bit more grown up about it. I mean, mm. I'm a big advocate that we need licensing. I yep, think we so should be I. seen as a proper proper industry. Same. We should be licensed. We should be you know we should be under scrutiny. And if we're under scrutiny, we'll do a better job. We, we, we will. And it's kind of like we're you know I've sat in you know round table modern barber luckily enough and I've you know I'm a fellow at Milton Keynes College and I get to go on mm. you know to their events and you know listen in and give my opinion to stuff like that and I'm you know I'm grateful for that but you kind of like you sit there and you go the, everyone goes yeah you can't do this you can't do that you can't do that and I'm like why don't we just start with making a retail unit surgical mm. like tattooing so if you know if you want to go and open up a, a barber shop you know let's kind of make the initial process of like, you need some vetting because it needs to start yeah. somewhere. Yeah, if, no. they, if they all came along right now and go, right, we're going to pass legislation, you and I both know yeah. that 95% of uh, barbershops in the UK probably would, wouldn't be able to either sustain it or for their, or they would fail. But you know, you know but that's that's <laughs> to, kind, to, of, to that's kind the... of the rub. I saw someone put up, you know, who's, you know, who has a big following and is, is, is in the industry and um, and she put up a really big thing that you know MVQs don't matter, MVQs don't count, and you're kind of like, no, no one really wants to see your certificate, mm. and you know, but it is part. We should it should be part. It should, it be, part should be a bigger part. It yeah. should be um, licensed. So that's my answer. I think yeah. this is why people don't ask me questions, and no, I no, ask them. No, no. <laughs> but it's like it's like it's like VCTC introduced like the endpoint assessment. Is it the the the, the uh. answer to all the problems? No, but you know what? One of my guys mm. failed because his glove split a little bit, yeah. and I was like, okay, cool. But at least someone's actually doing something about making that part better yeah <laughs> you know no, I, mean? I, mean, I think i just think it needs to be i think if you're taking someone into college then the, the the store itself needs to to have a bit of scrutiny on what what it's doing what is it playing its part mm. in in giving four or five hours of training over and, and stuff um well mate oh you've got barber connects haven't you yeah. i'm gonna see you at barber yeah. connect yeah Are you excited about that i am I'm doing, what are you doing I'm, what are we gonna see you up to i'm doing uh i'm doing a little stage haircut with Simon Hairgrounds. Okay. Um, and uh, it's really weird calling him that because I've known him for years. So it's like, <laughs> I, I know his real name. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and then I've got a little slot on the business stage. Um, so oh, cool. again, I, I, I just want to kind of put out there, you know, that whichever way people choose to run their business, I think that, you know, as business people and, and leaders, you should be able to 
um, mentor them and support them mm. in in the right way. And that's what I'm going to kind of discuss on there and the pros and cons of you know what if you choose one have one route if you choose employed self employed you know it's a bit of a yin and yang and mm. just be wary, be wary of which way you're going because there's an outcome to both yeah um, and just kind of present that. No, I'm looking forward to that bit. Oh, mate, that's very, very mm. exciting. And uh, Barbone, anything? Do you see that being? I kind of, I kind of just briefly you... went uh, for a while. Went, okay, do you know what? I'm really, I'm really cool here. I'm really happy. And then I've kind of like, uh, yeah, after the kind of bit of selling my old business that got me a bit down, um, I've kind of regained a bit of, uh, of my confidence back and belief. And uh, I'll, I can go as far as saying that I've spoke to a few estate agents. Fantastic. So that's, that's where I am. Well, mate, it was. I'm so pleased you came up. It's been really yeah. lovely. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck with it. And I'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing you up at um, yeah, yeah, Connect. Yeah, looking forward to it. And, um, and looking forward to what your, your next thing does. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for watching this episode of The Noble Barber. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe. If you've got comments of what we should be doing in future, please give us your questions and we'll try and find an expert to talk to. Or if you're the expert and you want to come on here and help stay in touch, we'll get you on. Come and join us on the sofa.